Wow. Wow. What have we just experienced as fantasy managers this past weekend? The race in Kota was almost perfect for my team. It was almost perfect. I was so happy. I went to bed such a happy man on Sunday night. Being the race finished around 10pm my time. I chilled out for a little bit post-race. Went to bed a very happy man. Woke up around 6, about 6.30am for work the next day. It was pretty dark and bleary. I got up, I was thinking, oh, I need to check my rank. I wonder what, I wonder if I managed to break into the top 100, maybe even maybe even further. I had such a good weekend. Surely it's surely my rank is good. Uh, so I logged in, had a little look, looked down my phone, and what? Like, what? What? What the hell? Why is Lewis on minus eight? What the? And then I clicked into it. The disqualification showed up, and I was literally like, Oh my God, what has happened? And I obviously straight went straight on Twitter, on the F1 website, etc. Found out what happened. I was truly devastated, truly devastated. I think it's the the lowest low that I can I can honestly remember in all my years of fantasy management. I just can't remember feeling that shocked and disappointed um, as a as a result of the disqualifications. And you know that. If sure, like they didn't meet the regulations, but by by how many, how much of a millimeter, I don't know exactly. But it's just it was just such a shock from you know, like I say, for me personally, going to bed, not knowing anything that's going on. I suppose other people that are kind of awake, maybe any American viewers right here, would kind of see what was going on, and um, you know, when the news broke, the whole possible qual- disqualification, it kind of almost softens the blow when it comes. But for me personally, it hit me hard in that morning when I was kind of bleary eyed. In, in the dark, the sun hadn't even risen, check my phone, and to see Lewis Hamilton sat there on minus eight after a triumphant weekend for my fantasy team, it was demoralizing. So, in a kind of a brothers in arms kind of way, I'm going to go through what um, a load of people have sent to me on Twitter, X, and as you can see, all the tabs lined up at the top there, we're ready to go. We're going to go through some some of the sad sob stories uh, what happened in Kota. If you if you don't want to listen to any of the sad sob stories, you just want to go straight to team selection because that's kind of what this video is predominantly about, then I will put chapters in the video. Feel free to skip. But if you, like me, felt shocked, disappointed, sad, demoralized, disheartened, just upset by the whole thing, then join me over the next couple of minutes as we go through some sad, sad stories. Let's let's kick it off. Should I kick off my own, my own story, actually? The fact that I'm currently ranked 123 in the world. Oh, boohoo, yep, yeah, you got a terrible rank. But actually, one of my subscribers messaged me on, on Twitter to say that he'd saw my rank pre-update, pre the disqualification, and I was sixth, sixth in the world. <laughs> yeah, like I said, boohoo, I'm 123 now, but still, you know, being sixth in the world, what, what an opportunity that is to, like, maybe even win the whole thing. But that's out the window now, thanks to the, thanks to the DQ. So that's my sob story. Let's, let's share some of yours. First one here is from Toby Jeffrey. He went from 506th in the world all the way down to 3.4k. Ouch. Let's move on. Let's just skip through these. Um, uh, M8Z sold Norris and signs to get Hamilton and Albon, who admittedly did okay, but not as well as Norris and signs. Intentionally kept Piastri and McLaren DNF because lately been on par of Norris, a disaster class from the top 1,000 down to 2,800. Here we've got, oh, Justin had Piastri and Alonso. Just a simple, simple and sad statement there from Justin. Piastri and Alonso. Stefan decided to take uh, trust Hulk over Sonoda. Again, could be worse. However, his rival, his mini league rival, had Sonoda, took first place in the 400 people work lead. Oh, the budget pain from Stefan there. Thanks for sending in. Frano went from 2.5k to 10k, what a drop, what a drop, and P2 to P4 in the private league, and that is after a limitless bust. Let's go with Joseph Milazzo, before and after pictures here, and again lots of limitless lots of limitless users sending in, uh, Hamilton the clerk sitting pretty, 18, 40, the Mercedes with a haul of points all the way down to the big red numbers. Clayton Sim, 386 points, beautiful score. Down all the way down to 289, almost 100 points lost with the DQs. Jow had both Leclerc and Hamilton, yep, lost about 100 points. Connor went limitless, had Leclerc and, and Lewis in there, yep. Like I said, I think a lot of people, most people that went limitless and had this kind of build. 
and again those red numbers just pain we've got who we got here Andre in here went limitless again yeah another limitless user um, with both Hamilton and the clerk at the top there not what you want to see when you use one of your most important chips Chris sharing the same pain as me I did exactly the same thing used a three time on Max well hey used a two time on Lewis well hey came second went to bed exactly with a 50 point lead in my league and woke up 50 points back season is over from Chris ouch here we've got Patrick dropped from 29 all the way down to 634 I don't know what team you had to drop that far I don't know because he hasn't shared it with me but that's a big drop from 29 the heights of 29 all the way down to the 600s Justin no comment just sends in the DNF from Piastri and Alonso I believe oh, that was um, the same one from earlier I think actually yeah Richard this one this one pains me when I read it um, you can see my comment here all out brutal so Richard took signs and Red Bull out so I could afford Hamilton for the two times and Max the three times quite happy yep why, why wouldn't you be um, until the DQs came and actually considered keeping Red Bull and instead just swapping out Oscar Piastri for Gasly who finished in sit from the Grand Prix but decided it was a bad idea Richard oh my goodness a couple more here we've got one from David that forgot the deadline and is now sat with his two most important chips with only one sprint, sprint race left so I've given him a little bit of advice on potentially what's to come and finally here we've got Robert who has lost 18 to 90 points um, again I think it's probably yeah around that close to 100 points with Lewis and the clerk down so that's kind of it there from um, from all the, the sad stories thank you for joining me on this uh, this sad journey don't you just love this game honestly don't, don't just love this game but no there'll be more highs surely and now we're gonna get into the actual team selection for Mexico let's skip away back from here so team selection for Mexico let's try and put the Cota debacle behind us and I think I want to share share the quote that Lewis said post race when he found out he was disqualified you know Lewis can come up with some fairly cliche kind of things but this one kind of struck with me it struck stuck with me a little bit and he said it's not how you fall but it's how you get back up and that like I say maybe maybe sound a little bit cliche but it's true it is not how you fall it's how you get back up so let's get back up for Mexico this is my team at the moment. What am I thinking? I'm thinking, first of all, McLaren, who have been part of the new template for the latter part of the season, are not going to be very strong around here. Does that mean we just chop them off our team? Does it mean we completely cut them off? Does it mean we just leave a little bit of coverage? Do we stick the McLaren constructor because they offer us good value still? And then on the contrast to that, I think Mercedes are going to be very good around here and also likely to be good around Brazil. Um, therefore, do we kind of try and jump off McLaren to try and join on the Mercedes bandwagon? Um, we saw that the update certainly seems to be working. Some positive um, quotes coming out from both Lewis and George in terms of the floor upgrade. And we saw it from the race pace as well, particularly Lewis Hamilton, who sat here in my team over on the left-hand side here. I'm kind of tempted to leave him in there because although his price at 25 million, it's a lot for what he's been delivering so far this season, I genuinely think that he's definitely a podium contender this weekend and possibly the win are we thinking I don't know that might be a bit too far I don't know but I think if the Mercedes are going to get a win this season then the next couple of races may well be their best bet and so I'm very tempted to, to kind of stick with Lewis Hamilton I could I could just literally leave my team it's kind of how I start with most of my team selections before I start dabbling dabbling around a little bit but I could just leave my team as it is because it's kind of <clears throat> kind of fine if I did leave my team as it is I'd probably cut out Sonoda for, for Guan Yu Zhou as I can afford him just because I think Guan Yu Zhou um, Bottas I believe came out after after Cota and said um, that the Mexican track should suit the Alfa Romeo better than recent tracks. So again, that kind of makes me think Juan Yuzhou is quite a good budget option if you can get up to him. So I could see myself go over a team like this if McLaren's look decent enough in the practice sessions. Um, however, I could also, if we just sort of pop it back to who I had originally, as Yuki Sonoda, I could just make my, I've got two free substitutions. I could cut out Lewis um, and just kind of go with the cheaper Mercedes option if I think Mercedes is going to go well. And that enables me to get either Piastri um, back in and have quite a lot of excess money to be honest or I could even uh, dabble in back with the Aston Martin and Aston Martin have been kind of off the radar quite a lot um, so far 
since pretty much since the summer break or since pretty much since Silverstone actually they've just been on a downward trajectory but new upgrade in Kota obviously Friday Saturday did not go well but again in terms of race pace and race performance and the end result if you kind of forget about the whole Fernando DNF um, reliability issue Stroll in particular had some very good race pace pretty much on par with like Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton which is kind of shocking shocking it's Lance Stroll he's been kind of mudded for the last few weeks kind of been talked down about how badly how badly he's been doing and does he deserve a seat in f1 blah 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 but all of a sudden he's done a really stellar performance to get into the top 10 from the pit lane um in in last week's race so i think aston martin could be good round here alonso i trust and and he did well here last year until again he had an engine problem and ended up dnfm but so i could see myself kind of sticking with a team like this again i could get up to guan Yuzhou, but i don't have that that third free transfer and I don't think swapping budget drivers is worth the minus four however however do we want to kind of go a little bit more harder on the on the Mercedes and this is where it kind of comes down to how you want to play as a fantasy manager because I've I've found over the last year I've needed to be a bit more flexible and adaptable to to what's going on the template, as as it appears, so let's go back to like proper proper hardcore template for, for a second. I think a lot of teams are going to look something something like this. You'll see a lot of teams that kind of come out of Cota, post limitless teams, etc. Will kind of look like this. How do we like morph this into to something different? And do we want to like we, a lot of people will just feel safe with this, and I think a lot of people will stick with pretty much this team. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because you know trust in in what's gone well for the past few weeks. However. I just have this strong feeling that McLaren are not going to be as good. So I think we need to have some some plan to at least ditch off one or two, or if not all their assets going into the, going into the next couple of races. So uh, for me, I have I have considered dropping the McLaren constructor, which is quite a big call. Because like I say, they do offer very good value for money. Um, but I would be looking at potentially bringing the Mercedes if I truly think that they are that good. Um, you know, the McLaren constructor, like I say, value for money, really good at the pit stops, as we know, they keep setting ridiculous times at the pit stop, another two second stop in Cota, um, and it covers Piastri and Lando Norris, should they, should they do well, so it is very tempting to leave McLaren in, however, if we jump over to F1 Fancy Tools for a second, have a quick look at the point scoring averages across the season, we take, well, let's take Verstappen and Perez as an example, uh, Verstappen across the season is averaging per race 46 points, 46.4, um, he costs, if we go back here, look at the prices here, Verstappen 29.5, Red Bull Racing 29.4, almost identical pricing, but f- so for the pretty much the exact same price, you can get 46 points from Verstappen, or from Red Bull 84 points, so that kind of screams to me that the constructor is crucial to get right, and although Mercedes and McLaren will offer good value for money still, I just think the Mercedes, if with the potential for podiums, maybe even a win, if if they really do excel around Mexico, even maybe more than what what we might think, then I think <coughs> getting the Mercedes, excuse me, getting the Mercedes constructor in this week could be a good play. Like I say, it kind of comes down to how you want to play, how adaptable are you, how flexible are you, how much of a gambler do you want to be. Obviously, the practice sessions will tell us a lot more before we make this decision, although they are doing some tyre testing on the Friday, which is very annoying. I just want a nice, easy weekend where I can pick the best team. But yeah, so I do think the Mercedes definitely on my radar. But then who fills in the rest of the slots? Um, again, uh, we could kind of play it safe with someone like George Russell. And then that leaves like six million. So again, you can maybe double up on... Double up on the Alpha Tori boys and have a team like this, and you still have a little bit of McLaren cover. For me personally, I'd have to take a minus four for this, but I don't think it's the end of the world having used my wild card already to save me a minus four a couple of races ago. So if you need if you need to shuffle around quite a lot to shift off McLaren, if, if McLaren suddenly don't look good in FP1, FP2, FP3, and Mercedes are literally topping the charts, and we all want to kind of pile onto Mercedes. It's difficult to pile on to Mercedes because of the pricing. However, Lando Norris, as you can see here, he's, he's almost caught up George Russell in terms of price. You could even look at switching Norris to Russell and then having your slots down here a bit stronger. Um, I'm not sure what can we do if we were to change that around. We could like look at someone like, we could even just about get Fernando Alonso and Piastri. Um, 
that's quite a nice kind of all-rounded team. And then you've kind of got the Mercedes coverage there, as well as the, Mercedes, the McLarens, if they do well. Fernando Alonso, I've always said, should do well. And Ricardo's got done well around this track as well, um, kind of as an enabler. That's just for my budget, though. I know a lot of people won't have that budget, so this is just me kind of talking about my team. Um, but let's just reset this for one second before we hop back in. Um, another team I've considered is just kind of leaving Lewis Hamilton in there and getting rid of all the McLaren assets, which is, again, sounds extreme. Bringing in Mercedes, so I've got kind of effectively double Lewis Hamilton. Uh, bringing in Fernando Alonso as well, and then, again, like I said, the budget enabler for me, just about afford it. It does mean I have to run two budget drivers, but the Alpha Tories have looked quite decent. Daniel Ricciardo's managed to got, get, get through his first Grand Prix back from his wrist fracture. So, and like I say, he's got kind of a good record around here. Yuki Tsunoda, I feel like, is quite trustworthy. Um, and is that is that kind of, you know, having two budget drivers, is it worth it to get the Mercedes guys in? If if the Mercedes are likely to podium, like double podium, finishing in the top four, basically, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. It's, it's hard to tell because, you know, who if you don't have two budgets, the, your fourth driver is likely to be someone like an Albon, depending on budget, maybe Piastri, again, depending on budget and the rest of your team. Um, so how many more points is someone like Albon or Piastri or even a Stroll or a Gasly or someone like that going to score more than someone like Ricardo and Sonoda on any given weekend? Um, Piastri on previous weekends obviously has massively outscored them, but on a track where I don't think McLaren are going to do well and I can see Piastri finishing like, I don't know, 7th or 8th or something, for example. Um, you know, if the Aston Martins do look good um, and then particularly if the, you know, the Ferraris, the Mercedes are, might be ahead of them, then I think there's definitely some some leeway for bringing in two budget drivers to justify the kind of exorbitant price of the Mercedes drivers. So this is definitely a team I'm looking at. It does look wild because there's no orange at all, um, but it's definitely something I'm considering. And I think it's something that other people, you guys, other people, you should consider as well, because I just think the Mercedes is going to be strong. So I think this is definitely a consideration. Like I say, we could we could also just completely play it safe and just make my two free substitutions to bring in, um, bring in George Russell, and then put back in either Fernando Alonso, or if I if I want to stick with the triple McLaren, do this and just kind of stick with the template. And this is probably fine. And with my rank being as good as it is, maybe just sticking with the template is kind of fine. And just assume that it will be like fine to stay around the top hundred or top one thousand, whatever it is I want to want to do. But I don't really want to play like that. I don't want to play according to my rank. I want to carry on playing the way I've been playing, which has got me the current success, but it's not successful yet until I finish the final four deadlines. Um, so I don't want to really just think about, oh, I want to protect my rank at this stage, although it is something that's creeping into my mindset a little bit, so I'm not really sure. Um, but this is a, kind of a nice a nice way to cover, cover that off. And again, Maybe the Mercedes don't look good. We could look at bringing in Perez for his home race. Um, I did say I did say I'd have a good. I had a good feeling that Perez would do all right in Cota, and he did. He was what the third, was he the third best scorer <clears throat> um, in Cota. Let's have a quick look. I oh, know. Yeah, third best scorer behind Verstappen and Norris. So Perez, there are thirty-two points or joint with Sainz and Venice. Um, yeah, he did pretty well. It wasn't phenomenal, but he, he was solid and got the points, which obviously bulked out his score, the Red Bull racing score, and kind of did more or less what I expect him to do. Um, so now coming to his home race where he's got a good record here, a couple of podiums in the last couple of years, um, probably quite confident after his Cota race. I do think Sergio Perez is certainly an option as well. So yeah, I'm, fantasy is kind of really opened up at the moment. Like I say, the practice session is going to be very important because I have the feeling that Mercedes will be good. McLaren won't be so good. Aston Martin may well be good as well. So there's quite a lot going on and it's going to, it's important, going to be important to pay attention to the practice sessions despite the whole tire testing thing which is kind of frustrating um and yeah kind of go kind of go from there and i think um that's kind of where i'm at the moment i can't i feel like i can't say too much more because until the practice sessions come along we're kind of a bit cut adrift from what else we can do so the options are basically more or less stick with the template edge your bets maybe with mercedes like i say edge your bets a little bit with maybe um mercedes and aston martin kind of coming good and going with a team like this. I could. This is quite a nice balanced team, I'm not going to lie. Um, I quite like it. It kind of covers my bases with McLaren if they still do well. Landon Norris is on a run of podium, so it seems almost criminal to cut him out, although although I feel like it might might be worth it. So I could quite happily go with a team like this. But like I said, I am heavily considering kind of going a bit more all-in with Mercedes as much as I can afford it. The only downside really is 
if McLaren do well, it's going to hurt me and I have to run two budget drivers, which isn't fantastic. But that's kind of where I'm at the moment. I don't have too much more to say about it. And I'm, unfortunately, I'm not going to have any more to say about it on Friday Final Thoughts because I'm away uh, this weekend. So I'm afraid uh, past this video, it's going to be kind of a few tweets um, over on X, whatever you want to call it. Um, over the next few days or whatever but feel free to contact me on x or in the comments below because i'll be interested to know your thoughts do you think that mclaren are going to be are going to be still competitive are you sticking with the kind of mclaren template do you think mercedes are going to be competitive enough to sort of dump off mclaren that high value constructor which is what almost almost 10 million so about 9 million cheaper than the mercedes can we justify bringing in the mercedes are they just too expensive for what they are does it unbalance the team too much? I'd like to know your thoughts because, you know, this is just me me talking to myself at the end of the day otherwise. So, yeah, um, I like this team, but I also like the going kind of going a bit more all in. Um, let me just bring it back on screen again for a second just so you can we can finish off with where where my uh, where my thinking is. Um, this is kind of the other team I'm quite heavily considering, like I say, going kind of all in with the Mercedes. Trust in the Aston Martin update and Fernando Alonso. And then kind of hoping that the Alpha Tories can just kind of prop me up on in terms of budget options. So, um, yeah, I do think that's that's where I am at personally in terms of um, where everyone else is at. Because obviously I've used all my chips now. I finally, finally used them all up with four races to go. And there'll be some people left thinking, what can I do with my remaining chips? Um, I guess most people will use most of the chips. They might have one or two left over. Like if, if, I, if I had, like, for example, the two big chips in terms of three times DRS and Limitless... I would probably be looking potentially at Limitless for this coming weekend. Um, like I say, if McLaren don't look like they're going to be as good, um, then I would <clears throat> definitely be tempted to use it this weekend and just go all in on Mercedes. Or you could look to save save the Limitless for Brazil. Um, again, where Mercedes should be strong and McLaren will be likely weaker. Um, so I do think that yeah, using Limitless either this weekend or the following weekend is probably your best bet to use it. In terms of three times DRS, um, I would well, I'd definitely try and save that for the sprint weekend, probably um, around Brazil. Probably stick on Verstappen again, and then two times Lewis, because that went really well for me and Cota, didn't it? Yeah, but no, I do think um, going forward, those those that's kind of what I would do if I had those chips left. In terms of other chips, I don't know if if anyone's got any other chips left by this point, but something like Autopilot, there was some news breaking. Um, today about Ferrari possibly taking some grid penalties so you could autopilot when when Ferrari are said to have taken some grid penalties just in case someone like Sainz maybe you know qualifies well gets the qualifying points but then gets the grid penalty puts gets put back 10 places gets some overtakes maybe particularly if it comes around Brazil that'd be ideal so autopilot could be good um, if there's grid penalties that's what I was holding out for earlier on in the season with the three times DRS boost I just got cold feet about waiting any longer which is why I pulled the trigger in Cota I didn't want to wait any longer for the grid penalties because it's just like if it doesn't happen then I'm just completely cut adrift with my three times DRS. So if you've got your three times DRS at this point though, I would just use it in Brazil. Um autopilot looks like grid penalties might be coming, so save it for that. Um no negative, probably save it for Las Vegas because it's an unknown track, completely unknown. Um so I feel like if there's going to be some some trouble for the drivers, it could be around there. could be some DNFs around there. It looks a little bit tight in a couple of different sections from what I've seen of it. I've only seen a couple of glimpses of the track um, a little while ago. But from what I remember, there's a couple of tight little tight little turns. So we could see some contact between the drivers. So no negative. Definitely could be useful around Las Vegas. Um, Wildcard, like I say, could very well be in play for a lot of people that have saved it this weekend. If the Mercedes look stonking fast, then anyone with a wild card could quite happily just sort of skip out as many McLaren assets or whatever they want um, to dump off in, in place of the Mercedes boys. So um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at um, this weekend. I Like I said, I don't have any chips left, so I'd be interested if anyone's got any other chips left and um, what their thoughts or what their plans are for the final four weeks. Do you have a plan? If you've got any chips left, do you have a plan left? You got this far, like you've got to use them up. So don't don't forget them, don't waste them. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. It's been quite a long one because of the whole uh violin moments earlier on the video but i thought it'd be quite funny to add in um to commiserate together so yeah thanks everybody for following me it's been been a pleasure and i'll see you uh next week my god it's literally next week already for brazil where we'll see well hopefully we'll have some good news 
depending on what goes on in Mexico as to whether the Mercedes truly are fast. If they're fast round Mexico, I anticipate they'll also be fast round Brazil. And we know they won Brazil, George Russell, with his one and only F1 victory round Brazil uh, last year. So yeah, Mercedes definitely hot on the radar. And I, I'd be relatively relatively surprised if I don't end up with at least one with at least one Mercedes asset but we'll see we'll see what the practice sessions bring um and yeah like like I say that's kind of it for me for now thank you very much for watching and hopefully we can have a less shocking and disappointing end to the race um coming out of Mexico so thanks very much comment away like the video if you if you like it and all that stuff um, and I'll catch you next week for Brazil thanks very much everyone and bye for now